This is the first installment of a series that I am really excited about. This is the first episode of the history of tech, and this one is the history of Atari. In 1971, video games were not yet mainstream. The markets were just forming, and names like Atari were just names talked about among a close-knit group of people. That soon changed when on June 27, 1972, Ted Dabney and Nolan Bushnell started the computer game company that would be known and loved as Atari. The name came from a Japanese form of the popular strategy game, Go. The first game was made prior to 1972 and was Computer Space, which was loosely based off Steve Russell's game of Space War. Five months later, the company would release a game that would change the fabric of gaming, Pong. This first iteration of Pong was in upright form, and it was only available in arcades. Atari would release a few other games in the next few years, but all would be in the classic arcade-style machines. In 1976, Atari started an effort to create a flexible platform that could play all of their existing games. The result was the Atari Video Computer System, or the VCS. Chances are you haven't heard of the VCS, but we'll get into that in a second. The VCS would become one of the most influential products of the early technology age and would spawn the modern video gaming era as we know it. So what happened? Well, despite the revolutionary product, Bushnell knew that the small company could not afford to put the console into production. Then came the inevitable. Atari would have to be bought out. Bushnell sold Atari to Warner Communications for a cool $28 million. Then, in December of 1978, Bushnell was fired after disagreements with how the company was run. Next, the company set out to make a successor to the VCS. The company decided to make the best console that it possibly could. This was during the home computer boom, though. So they took the new product, added a keyboard and inputs, and made the Atari 800 along with its smaller sister system, the 400. The systems never really caught on to the level of success of the Apple II, however. Next, the company released the 5200, which was a successor to the VCS, and so they changed the name of the VCS to the 2600. The 5200 was very disappointing, though, as the games were not backwards compatible with the 2600, the controllers were unreliable, and the game library was not expansive. Still, the Atari division of Warner Communications accounted for a third of the company's profits. However, despite initial success, Atari was never able to replicate the success of the much-adored 2600. Then, the video game crash of 1983 occurred, and stock prices fell from $60 to $20. With Nintendo's rapid Japanese success, it seemed that Atari was one foot in the grave. In a way, that happened. Warner sold Atari to Trammel Technology. The name was then changed to Atari Corporation, and Warner held on to the video game division until they sold it to Namco in 1985. Atari Corp. would then work primarily on computers and release the Atari ST, which had a 16x32-bit system. In 1986, however, the company looked promising once more when they released two new consoles, the 2600JR and the 7800. The next exciting thing came in 1989 when Atari released the handheld color gaming system known as the Atari Lynx. The company was unable to get the parts necessary to international production by the Christmas season that year. With this and the added factory of, factor of the Nintendo Game Boy, which despite being colorless, was cheaper and had a better battery life, Atari never saw much success from the Lynx, which could have been such a promising product. Atari would then come as much to sue Nintendo over having a monopoly, but, of course, the plea was rejected. Then, in 1993, Atari released its last console, the Jaguar. It had a 64-bit architecture, the only one of its time, but it sold very poorly. It'd be the last American console produced until the Xbox. This was pretty much the final nail in the coffin, and the company was once again forced to sell, this time to Hasbro, and only its assets and name in 1998. In 2001, after Infrograms bought Atari from Hasbro, the company announced that it would launch two new games. They renamed the company as Atari Division, Atari Incorporated, and bought out the rest of the shares, making it privately owned on October 8, 2008. Then, in 2009, Infograms announced that it would change the entire company's name to Atari SA. The company would temporarily enter bankruptcy and then enter into casino audiences with Atari Casino. All in all, these efforts would pretty much go unnoticed, as Atari days of being a big player are inevitably over. 
As much as the company did to make the video game industry, it is sad to see that the once beloved Atari has moved on to the great cloud in the sky. Only memories and the results of people that truly care about the art of retro gaming will remember the Atari, and in 50 years, and in my opinion, nothing can be more tragic than the things that cause generations so much happiness to simply fade into being obsolete. Comment down below to tell me what tech story you'd like to see me do next. <laughs>